These are the solutions to AQA's 2023 Level 2 Certificate for Learn Mathematics. This is paper 2, which is a calculator paper. First question says solve 8d minus 3 over 3d minus 7 is equal to 5 over 2. For a question like this, what you would do is cross multiply. So the 2 comes up and multiplies this 8d minus 3 and likewise the Bottom line, the denominator on the left-hand side comes up and multiplies the 5, so 5 upon 3d minus 7. Now just multiply out the brackets, you will get 16d minus 6 is equal to 15d minus 35. Now bring all the d's to one side, so I'll bring them all to the left-hand side, I think it would be easier. And everything else goes across to the right-hand side. So that's what you have, tidy up, 16d minus 15d is just d. And minus 35 plus 6, to do that it is a calculator exam, but just to practice those skills, do 35 minus 6 and you'll get 29. And the negative number was bigger, so it's minus 29. Okay, it says the first four terms of a linear sequence are 15, 18.5, 22, 25.5. Work out the expression for the nth term. Very, very easy to do this. It's a linear term sequence, first of all, because it goes up. 3.5 every time. Now that tells you my nth term, you could also say un, but my nth term is 3.5 n. That's what it tells you. To get what you add or subtract this thing here, uh, what you do is you go back 3.5. So if you had 15 and you went back 3.5, it would take you back to 11.5. It's positive. So that's how I know it's plus 11.5. So either you can say your nth, nth term is equal to 3.5n or your un is equal to 3.5n plus 11.5. Now let's just check. This term, for example, this is my fourth term. So if I put in 4, 3.5 times 4 plus 11.5. Just do that, 3.5 times 4 and then plus 11.5. And that gives you... 25.5, so it looks to me like it's gonna work. Next thing says, a different linear sequence has an nth term. Work out the value of the first negative term in the sequence. Okay, so I'm gonna say put 318 minus nine to be less than zero if it's negative, and then we'll just solve this. So 318 then is less than 9n. That means 318 divided by nine is less than n. So that is, let's just do it, 318 divided by 9, doesn't work out nicely, that's 35 and a third is less than n, or you could say n is greater than 35 and a third. Now it says work out the value of the first negative term, so your answer n is going to be 36. So 35 wouldn't be negative, uh, but 36, the nth, uh, 36th term would be Okay, right, next one, lovely matrix question. Okay, this is understanding matrix multiplication. This is in the first row, first column. So to get that T, I've multiplied my first row by the first column. So three times one plus five times four gives me T. So that just gives me T is equal to 23. To get my six, six is in the first row, second column. So that's, sorry, it's in the second row, first column. So that's my second row times my first column, which means u times t, sorry, that's u times one, because I need to put my glasses on, u times one plus two times four is equal to six. So that means u plus eight is equal to six. u is equal to six minus eight. u is equal to minus two. Okay. Question four, straight lines question. It says you've got a line P, which is 1K, and Q, which is R6, where K and R are constants. The midpoint of PQ has an X coordinate of five. The gradient of the line, uh, line two is, of the line is two, sorry, work out the value of K just. Okay, right. Hmm, right. First of all, the midpoint. How you get your midpoint is you add your X values and divide by two, 
and also you'd add your y values and divide by two. Now this, we know the x coordinate is five. We don't know what the y coordinate is, but we do know the x coordinate is five. So one plus r over two equals five. Let's just solve that. So that's one plus r over two equals five. That's the same as one plus r is equal to two times five, which is 10, which means r is equal to 10 minus one, r is equal to nine. So you've got your r equals nine. Not what they asked for, they asked for my uh, my value of k. Okay, so we do know about the gradient equals 2. So 2 is the y difference over the x difference. So let's just fill that in. So 2 is equal to, I'm going to do 6 minus k over my x difference, which is r, which is 9, minus one so we'll sort that out so we're using this so we had to use where we got this this was my value of r which we got from over here let's sort that out that is two is equal to six minus k sort out the bottom line that's eight multiply across two times eight is equal to six minus k 16 equals six minus k bring that k across make it positive bring the 16 across it becomes negative and we've got it, k is equal to minus 10. Nice question. Okay. Ne oh, there I was meant to do all my working out there. Whoops. Okay. Oh, right. Next one. What have you got here? I need to write that bigger that I can see it. y equals 0.5x to the power of 4. Work out the value for x, for which the rate of change of y with respect to x is 6.25. Right. The rate of change of y with respect to x that means dy by dx so that's the first thing we need to work out so to di differentiate multiply by your power and reduce your power by one so four times a half is two x to the power of three and we want to find when this thing is equal to 6.25 so put 6.75 sorry is equal to 2x cubed so it's just a rearranging uh, formula question 6.75 divided by 2 equals x cubed. Let's just do that. What was that? 6.75 divided by 2 is, oh, very nice. It is 27 over 8. That's what it comes out. Both of those things are cubed numbers. So you can then cube root the 27, you get 3. Cube root the 8, you get 2, which is 1.5. I think in an exam, if I got a nice answer like 1.5, I'd be pretty confident that I've got the question right. Okay, so work out a value of x, that's all we had to do. Lovely, next one is equation of a circle. Just a wee reminder, if you have a circle x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared, that is a circle with center a, b, and radius equal to r. Okay, so that's really what you, you need to learn for, for these types of questions. So, um, complete these statements. The coordinates of the center of a circle are, and the radius of the center of a circle is. I'm going to rewrite this thing slightly differently. I'm going to write it as x minus minus 7 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 6 squared. And then I can see minus 7 is the x, co x ordinate of my circle and four is a y coordinate. So that's gonna be, my center is gonna be minus seven, four, and the radius is six. This question says, here is a sketch of the curve, y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constants. The curve intersects the x-axis at minus four, zero. So that's this point over here, and p, zero, this point here. It also says as a turning point, which has an x coordinate of 0 0.5. Now, what we need to realize is there's a bit of symmetry about in these curves. So here, if I drew a line vertically up, uh, that would be symmetrical about this. So the distance from here to here is 4.5 units. So the distance from here to here would also be 4.5. So that's how you know P is, P is going to be equal to 0.5 plus 4.5. So P is equal to 5. Okay, so work out the value of p. p is equal to 5. I don't know why I'm using green. I'll go back to blue. Uh, it says solve the equation 
ax squared plus bx plus c is greater than zero. So uh, we have got to find, we've got a bit of work to do here. Or no, we don't have a bit of work to do here at all. We don't need to, I thought we had to find these values. We don't. We just want, let me just get rid of all of this for a second. We just want to find when this curve is greater than zero. So it's greater than zero, i.e. above the, ax, the axes out this way. And it's above the axes out this way. So that is x, out this way is x is less than minus 4. Out this way is x is greater than p. And we have worked out that p is 5. So it was x was less than minus 4. And x is greater than 5. Next question says, ABC is a triangle with perpendicular height AD. So you've got your perpendicular height AD is 4. And the area of ABC is 25 centimeters squared. Uh, so the area of the whole triangle is 25 centimeters squared. And you're told BD to, BD to DC is 2 to 3. So work out the size of the angle. Right, first thing we need to do is work out this whole length here. And we can do that using the fact that area is equal to a half times base times height. And we're told the area is 25. So 25 is a half times the base times the height, which we know is 4, which means 25 is equal to 2b, which means b is 25 divided by 2, b is 12.5. So that means, therefore, b to c is 12.5. Now we're going to use this information to find our angle, to find our side dc. So that means we're just going to we can say then 12.5 is worth five parts in this ratio. So 12.5, let me just write that in one second. 12.5 centimeters equals five parts. And we need to find DC, which it was three parts. So first of all, divide by five to get one part, which is going to be a two. 0.5 and then three parts which we're looking for is going to be 7.5 centimeters so that means basically we've got dc equals 7.5 centimeters okay we'll go back to our diagram go back to our diagram then we now know that this let me get rid of that long arrow here we now know that d to c is 7.5 and we need to find the angle W. So we'll just do it up here. Relative to W, the 7.5 is my adjacent. Relative to W, the 4 is my opposite. Let's just write down Sukatoa. And we've got the opposite and adjacent, so we're using tan. So let's write the whole thing. Tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. And then let's fill it in. Tan of W is equal to my opposite, which is 4 over 7.5 and then if we just do that and see what we get uh, your w then will be equal to tan to the minus 1 of 4 over 7.5 and I got 28 so I got my w is equal to 28 point uh, we'll go for 07 degrees to two decimal places. I'm not too sure what the degree of accuracy needs to be. Read the front of the exam paper. This question says the dimensions of the cuboid are given in centimeters. So you've got three X, two X, <coughs> X plus two Y. It says the total length of all the edges is 300. Show that Y is equal to 75 minus six X all over two. So the total length of all the edges, let's look first of all at the two X's. You've got one, two, three, four, lots of two x's so uh, our total which was equal to 300 you've got four lots of two x's to start us off what else have we got we'll do these in blue you've got these x plus two y's you've got one two three four of those so four of x plus two y and then what have you also got we'll do it in green You've got three x's, you've got one, two, three, and one, and behind there, four of those. So four lots of three x. So let's just tally that up. That's 300. 
is equal to 8x plus 4x plus 8y plus 12x. The 8x plus 12x is 20x, and then plus 4 is going to be 24, so 24x plus 8y. And then we'll just tidy that up. We will just say that's 300 minus 24x, all divided by 8, is equal to y. And then if you divide top and bottom by 4, 300 divided by 4 gives you 75. 24 divided by 4 gives you 6. 8 divided by 4 gives you 2, which is what we were looking for. Next part of the question says the volume of the cuboid is v. So the volume of this cuboid is going to be 3x times 2x times x plus 2y. 3x times 2x times x plus 2y. Let me get that written down quickly before I forget it. Uh, 3x times 2x times x plus 2y. Was it x plus 2y? It was indeed. And we also know that y is equal to 75 minus 6x over 2. So we just going to tidy it up. First of all, to do this, this times this, so it's going to be just 6x squared, n times x plus 2 times, and my y was 75 minus 6x over 2. So if you did that, that's going to be 6x squared and x plus, and here, this 2 and this 2 will cancel out. So that's just going to give you 75 minus 6x. Tidy up again, 6x squared. That's going to be 75 minus 5x. And then hopefully if we multiply out, we will get what we need. 6x squared times 75 is going to be up 450x squared. And then that's going to be minus 30x cubed. The next part says use calculus to work out the maximum value of v as x varies. So this is, and they give you a clue, they tell you calculus, so you do dv by dx. So similar to doing dy by dx to find the maximum value, similar idea. So let's differentiate your v with respect to x, you'll get 900x minus 90x squared. And what you would do, if it was dy by dx, you'd put dy by dx equal to zero. So here, what we're gonna do is put dv by dx equal to zero, i.e. zero is equal to 900x minus 90x squared. Then factorize, take a 90x outside a bracket, leaving you 10 minus x. So again, you're in this lovely situation mathematics, you've got a times b equals zero. So either your a equals zero or your b equals zero. So 90x equals zero or 10 minus x equals zero, x equals zero, or x equals 10. And it's gonna be this one, but uh, I'm not too sure if you need to do this, but I think I would do this just in case, just to prove its maximum. I do my d2v by dx squared. So differentiate your dv by dx, and you'll get 900 minus 180x. And just say when, when x equals 10, when x equals 10, your d2v by dx squared is going to be equal to, and it's going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to 900 minus 180 times 10. It's definitely going to be negative. Therefore, that tells you it's a maximum. Okay, so it's one of these weird things in mathematics. If your d2 whatever, so d2v by dx squared is less than zero, therefore it's a max. If your d2v by x squared was greater than zero, therefore it would be a min. So it's one of those weird opposite things in math mathematics. So um, that's it done. So you find work, work at the maximum value of v. Oh, we haven't. We had to work, that's why I always read the question, work at the maximum value of v as x varies. So x equals 10, now what we want to do is say when, so I would have run out of space here, in a real exam I would have had more space there hopefully, when x equals 10, v is equal to, put it back into the, the equation here, 450x squared minus 30x cubed, 
450 instead of x, 10 squared, minus, I forgot already, minus 30x cubed. So 30 times 10 cubed, and fire that into your calculator. Let's just do that now. 450, oops, 450 times 10 squared minus 30 times 10 cubed, which is 1500, zero, 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 and that's going to be centimeters cubed. <coughs> okay, next question, straight lines. Line K has an equation. 4x minus 5y equals 17. Line L passes through these points, so 3, 6, and minus 5, 16. Take the correct statement, so either lines are parallel, lines are perpendicular, lines are neither parallel or perp nor perpendicular. So this is about finding the gradient. Let me just write down my two lines. So k was 4x minus 5y equals 17. And l passed through 3, 6, and minus 5, 16. So we've got to rearrange to find the gradient. So this one, rearranging, think y the subject. y then would be equal to 4 over 5x minus 17 over 5. The only bit I care about is this, because this the coefficient, the thing that's multiplying the, uh, the x is a gradient so for k. The gradient of k is equal to 4 over 5. Now for this one, we've got to find the gradient. So gradient, remember, is a y difference over the x difference. So it is 16 minus 6 over minus 5 minus 3. What is 16 minus 6? It is 10 over minus 8. And that cancels down to be, that's the same as minus 5 over 4. Okay, happy days. So that was my gradient of L. Now... I would just say gradient of k is negative reciprocal of gradient of L. Therefore, your lines are perpendicular. Okay, so it was, your lines are perpendicular. Lovely. And again, I'd be pretty confident in the exam. I got that one right then. Uh, just be careful on your y uh, gradient again. Notice I started with the 16 on my top line. That means I had to start with a minus 5 on the bottom line. So uh, that's the only place people can go wrong. If you do get that wrong, that's where you could get a, a negative when you should get a positive or vice versa. Okay, question 11 says expand and simplify fully. So tricky enough, we expansion, easy to mess up. So here, 2x cubed times 3x squared is going to be 6x to the 5. 2x cubed times the 4 is going to be 8x cubed. Minus 9 times the x, 3x squared is going to be minus 27x squared. Minus 9 times the 4 is minus 36. And over here, x times x is x squared. Oops. What have I forgotten to do here? I forgot to expand this out. So you can see, here we are. I expand this out, so we'll take a wee step to do this. That's gonna be x times, then x minus four squared. If I do that, if I just do that out, x minus four times x minus four. Okay, right, there's nothing I can tidy up in here anyway, in this first bit. So it's 6x to the five, plus eight x cubed, minus 27 x squared, minus 36. Over here, I'll leave the x and then I'll expand this out. That will be x squared, x times x, x minus, sorry, minus 4x, another minus 4x, that's minus 8x. Minus 4 times minus 4 is plus 16. Now I'm tidy up again. Leave these first four terms as they are. We'll do nothing with them just yet. Then x times x squared is x cubed, then minus 8x squared, then 16x. Tidy up again, we've got 6x to the 5, and then you've got like terms, cubic terms. So that's 9x cubed, 
Then we have our quadratic terms. You've got minus 27x squared minus another 8x squared, that's minus 35x squared. And then you've got linear terms, or the x terms. You've just got 16x. And last but not least, you've got your numerical terms. You've just minus 36. So hopefully that is right. Just be careful. You can see there I nearly made a slight error there. So just be careful. And hopefully I haven't made any other mistakes. Okay, question 2012, sorry. V, A, B, D, V, A, B, D, V, A, B, C, D is a pyramid. The square horizontal base, A, B, C, D, has a side 15. V is directly above the center, and V to A is 28 centimeters. Work out the size of the angle V, A makes with A, B, C, D, so the size it makes with the base. Right, this is 3D trig. Now, what you would need to do is this line here, I'll do this in red, sorry, this line here is along the base. And if I go vertically up in the air, air that's clearly going to be a right angle. So what the angle they're looking for is here. So V, A, X. That's really the angle they're looking for in this question. Okay. So let's draw that triangle out as a right angle so we can see it. And we're not going to be able to solve this triangle just yet. There's our angle theta. We know VDA is 28. And that's all we know. We don't know what ADX is or what X to B is. So we can't solve it just yet. We'll come back to this. However, let's look. Uh, I'm going to look. I'm going to draw, put a weak point here. I'm going to call that M. And I'm going to do another triangle from A over to M. Now, if M is a midpoint, and then I go up to X, that doesn't look very accurate there. It should be a, uh, an easier triangle than that. That's my X. I'm sorry, I, uh, it should be an isosceles triangle, I should have said, because that was 15 was from A to B. So from A to M is half of that, so it's 7.5. This is also 15 from B to C, so M to X will also be 7.5. And then I'm going to call this, uh, I'll call this Y to avoid any confusion with the X here. Um, I'm going to call this Y and we can find Y. So if we find Y, that would give us AX. And then in this triangle, we would have what we need. Okay, so we can sort that out. So we'll use Pythagoras to find my Y. Y will be equal to 7.5 squared plus 7.5 squared and square root of that by Pythagoras. And if you don't get a perfect answer, leave it as a third if, if the calculator allows you. So 7.5 squared, square root of 7.5 squared plus 7.5 squared. And what I came out of my calculator was 15 root 2 over 2. Okay, which is perfect. That's an exact value. So we'll go back to this. I'll do this in blue now because I've just worked this out. That was 15 root 2 all over 2. Now we can find our theta. So this is my relative to the angle theta. That's my hypotenuse. That's my adjacent. So, so Katoa. I've got cos. Cos theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Again, run out of space here on this, but this is just what I'm doing on this thing. That means cos theta in this case is 15 root 2 all over 2 all divided by 28 your theta then would be equal to theta would be equal to then cos to the minus 1 of that so let's just do that 15 root 2 over 2 divided by 28 and then that's cos to the minus 1 of that answer. And that gave me to two decimal places 67.74 degrees to two decimal places. Okay, so a lovely wee 3D trig question.
Okay, next one says circle expression equivalent to 3x to the minus 7. So let's split that up. People are very bad at these. So let's look at that as 3 times x to the minus 7. And then think about it again. 3 is the same as 3 over 1. x to the minus 7 is the same as 1 over x to the power 7. And then piece it together. So it's 3 over x to the 7. So and I don't ever do any of that. Uh, obviously, but um, that's what I'm doing in my head. I've done it for that long. That's what you're doing very quickly in your head. But you can see it's 3 over x to the 7. And where people are very difficult, very bad at these, I should say, is when we're, you're integrating negative powers, as you'll see if you go on to do A-level mathematics, um, A-level powers of x, and they're just rewriting it back in that form. So you've got to you maybe start with something in this form, have to convert it into index form, Integrate it maybe or differentiate it and then convert it back and that's where people are are really bad So uh, just take a wee bit of time on those just to make sure you get them right Next one says simplify fully So I'm just working across the page here. That's 12 w to the power of 8 bottom line square both things So square the 4 you get 16 square the w cubed you get w to the power of 6 top and bottom divide by 4 to give you 3 and 4 and w to the power 6 goes into the bottom once goes into the top w squared times and that is it there we are okay weird we question this one it says square root of y times a cubed root of y is equal to what does that say uh y to the power of d and then that is e uh to the c c th root you could say <laughs> right let's rewrite this whole thing as y to the power of a half times y to the power of a third and then is equal to and then that would be y to the power of d on the top and c on the bottom because it's being raised to the power d and then the c is the root so if we just do that i can't believe i'm doing this with my calculator but if you do one half uh plus 1 over 3, when you add the powers, you're going to get y to the power of 5 over 6. So there we are. That's just y to the power of 5 over 6 is equal to y to the power of d over c. Work out the least possible values of c and d. That must be it. So c must be, let's see, c is the bottom one. So c is 6. d is 5. Yep, there we are. Okay, not too bad, actually, that one. Um. Okay, indice, index, not index at all, factorizing question here. Factorize fully. Let's rewrite this. Top line, can do nothing with. Bottom line, that's going to be a, what's that going to factorize to be? Um, one's positive, one's negative. Uh, plus a plus 8, a minus 2, yep. And then over here, 4 comes outside of bracket, leaving you 2 minus a oh that's nice over 3a so we've got that's what we've got now notice this bracket here very similar to this bracket but not quite so what i could do is i could rewrite this as 15a squared over a plus 8 i'll leave this one as it was a minus 2 but instead of taking out a 4, take out a minus 4, and then that will become a minus 2. And then we're good to go. So now we're ready to start a bit of cancelling. So nice neat line through the a minus 2. It goes. And then what else could we do? 3 goes into itself once. 3 goes into 15 five times. What else could we do? I'll do it in black. a goes into itself once a goes into a squared a times and that's it that's all we can do so multiplying on top 5a times minus 4 is minus 20a bottom line is just going to be a plus 8 and that is as good as i can go i think right fifteen says the function g is given by g of x equals a times b a times b to the power of x, where a and b are constants. The domain of the function is minus 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. So that's where it starts. 
and you've got two points, P which is 0, 1/2, and Q which is 1 and 3 over 2, the points on the graph, uh, work out the range of the function. Okay, right, well I need to find, I need to find uh, my A and B I think for this, I think is, is what I need to do here. So, uh, we're just going to sub in those points. Let me just write this down and we'll look at it. So I've got g of x, first of all, is equal to a times b, the power of x. And then you've got the point, which is 0, 1 half. And I'll do the other one over here, which is 1, 3 over 2. Okay. So the, why I'm doing this is I need to find out what this function is. Because I need to see uh, clearly the range. The range is going to be from when x is equal to minus 1, what you get for your g of x, all the way up from, from when x is equal to 2, what you get for your g of x. But I need to find a and b. I need to find g of x first. So I'm going to sub those points in. So when at 0, g of x, x equals 0, g of x equals a half. That's a times b to the power of 0. So that means your a is just equal to a half. If you're a good mathematician, what you do when you find an unknown is you rewrite your equation. So that's what your equation is. And we'll put in this point over here. So that means 3 over 2 is equal to a half, because that's what our g of x is, times my b to the power of 1. So we've got 3 over 2 is equal to, that's just a half times b. 3 over 2 divided by a half just gives you your b. 3 over 2 divided by a half just gives you b, and b is equal to 3 then. So that means your g of x is equal to a half times 3 to the power of x. So a half times 3 to the power of x. Now what we want to do is put in x equals minus 1 to see what we get for g of x, and put in x equals 2 to see what we get for g of x. So Again, run out of space on this. If I was doing this in the exam, hopefully I'd have enough space. You don't really want to have to go on the, the extra pages in the exam. It's a bit of a pain. But we were doing, first of all, g of minus 1. So putting that in, you're going to have a half times 3 to the power of minus 1. Do that on your calculator. A half times uh, 3 to the power of minus 1. And that is 1 over 6. What was the other one? G of 2, putting in 2, that's going to be a half times 3 squared. And that's just going to be 0 0.5 times 3 times 3. And that is 9 over 2, or 4 and a half. So write it as 4 with a half there. So my range. And look at the domain. This is important. You were allowed, your x value was allowed to be minus 1. Likewise, your x value was allowed to be 2. That means you've, you've got those inequalities or less than or equal inequalities in your range. Had they just been less than signs, in your range they would also be less than signs. So here, your range is, it goes, oops, goes from one third, one sixth, sorry, is less than or equal to g of x, is less than or equal to four and a half. This next question, which is question 16, uh, is a factor theorem question. It says 2x minus 3 is a factor of 6x cubed minus 25x squared plus 28x minus 6. It says solve 6x cubed minus 25x squared plus 28x minus 6 equals 0. Give all solutions as exact values. Now exact values would indicate to me that um, there's going to be square roots involved, so I'm going to have to use a quadratic equation. Might be right not, I might not. But what the factor theorem says, let me just go through that first of all. If you've got f of x, so some function, and if ax minus b is a factor, then that means that f of b over a will be equal to zero, okay? So that's what that means, okay? That's what the factor theorem says. But also then, uh, if this thing is a factor, then if you divide, so if your x minus three is a factor, then if you divide this thing here by x minus three, it will give you no remainder, okay? So that's really what we're using here in, the, in this question. So there's, 
Um, the other part I don't think will come into play, but really using the fact that if you do this gets divided by x minus three, it will um, there will be no remainder. And the cubic then, when divided by a linear, will be reduced to a quadratic, which then we can solve uh, by either factorizing or I'd imagine not because it says exact solutions or by using just the quadratic formula. So first thing we want to do is write down our question, six x cubed, just watch out for any gaps. And when I, when I say gaps, I mean any missing terms. Here we've got our cubic, quadratic, linear, numerical. So there's no gaps there, so that's fine. They're, all, they're in the right order. And you're dividing, and again, watch out for any gaps in your divider. And that's what you're doing. Now, to do this, this is a difficult thing to do, or a difficult thing to explain, I should say. You're looking at 2x, and you're thinking, what do you multiply 2x by to give me 6x cubed? And 2x would get multiplied by 3x squared. So put that above, line it all up, line that above the 3x squared. And line it above the x squared, the quadratic term. Now what you want to do is you want, want, want to multiply 2x minus 3 by the 3x squared. So that will be 6x cubed. And then that'll be minus 9x squared. Draw a line. Now don't put a wee minus here. Just know that you're subtracting, but just don't do it because it confuses things. Now we're doing minus 25x squared minus minus 9x squared. So minus 25x squared plus 9x squared, that would give me, let me just get rid of that yellow, that would give me minus 16x squared. And over here, 6x cubed minus 6x cubed clearly just gives you zero, so we don't need to write it down. Now, bring down the next term, which was plus 28x. And now what you're doing is you're thinking, what do you multiply 2x by to give me minus 16x squared? And the answer will be minus 8x. So we put a minus 8x here. And then minus 8x times 2x gives you minus 16x squared. Minus 8x times a minus 3 gives you plus 24x. And then subtract. So 28x minus 24x is 4x. Minus 16x squared minus minus 16x squared gives you zero. Good. And bring down your minus six. Now you're thinking, what do you multiply 2x by? They give you 4x. And hopefully we can see the answer is positive two. Positive two times 2x minus three is 4x minus six. And subtract, you get zero. If you got anything other than zero, you know it's wrong because it tells you this thing is a factor. So it should go in a, it's like going in a whole number of times, uh, but that's what it is. Okay, right, what's the story so far? Let's see uh, what we've got so far then. We have we found out therefore that your f of x could be written as two x minus three upon three x squared minus eight x plus two. Now let's just look at this quadratic bit here. Your sum is minus eight and your product is six. So are there two numbers at which multiply to give six and add to give minus eight? And there's not, unfortunately. So you know that bit's not gonna factorize. So give up on factorizing that. Also, you know, this came up on a CCA exam a few years ago where this bit was what's called a, where well, you couldn't solve this quadratic. There was only one solution to the cubic. So that sometimes happens as well. All right. Um, in which, just to show you what that would mean, how, how do you actually have a, there's a cubic graph. It normally has three solutions because it crosses the axis, the x axis three times. But in the one I was talking about, I'm going to make something up here. Like say it was x minus x plus four. And then upon, I don't know, 17 x squared minus 100 x uh, plus 45. Okay, so Let's pretend this thing wasn't solvable. That's what it would look like, your graph. So it, it only crosses the x-axis once. So it, do, it is possible to have a, quadra, a cubic, which has only one solution. Okay, but ours, ours I'm going to assume, has got three solutions. Let's find out. Right, first thing we're going to do to solve this is we're going to put 2x minus 3 equal to 0. And also, I'm just working across the page here, and over, I've run out, it, would have run out of space here. 
it's just because it's big on this. Um, so put 2x minus 3 equals 0. That means 2x equals 3, which means x equals 3 divided by 2, or I'll just write that as 1.5. To solve this one, uh, it's set exact, so that gives me, or we had a look there to see, and it was going to be difficult to use a sum product or impossible. So we're going to use our quadratic formula. So a is equal to 3, b is equal to minus 8, c is equal to 2. So remember your quadratic formula, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a, and then we'll just fire that in. That means x is equal to minus of minus b, so minus, sorry, minus of b, which is minus 8, plus or minus the square root, b squared, use brackets, minus 8 squared, minus 4 times my a, which is 3, times my c, which is 2, all over 2a, so that's 2 times 3. I'm just going to fire that in, bear with me a wee second, fire that into my calculator, fraction button, uh, minus minus 8, and minus, I'll do the minus 1 first, minus uh, the minus 8 squared, minus 4 times 3 times 2, all over 2 times the 3. And when I did that, I got a perfect value, an exact value of 4 minus root 10 over 3. So if I go back and change that positive, that square root, instead of minus the square root to plus the square root, you'll get exactly the same thing, except it's a plus 1. So you've got x is equal to 4 plus root 10 all over 3. So there's your solutions. x equals, I'll write it as 1 and a half, or 4 minus the square root of 10 all over 3, and 4 plus the square root of 10 all over 3. Okay, uh, this next question says a function is given by ax sorry, AX upon 3x squared minus 2 plus 5x, where A is positive constant, and H is an increasing function for all values of X. Work out the possible values of A. Give your answer as an inequality. Okay, right. First of all, I'm going to look, I'm going to multiply out my H of A, H of X, sorry, and that will give me 3AX cubed minus 2AX plus 5X. If it's an increasing function, basically your dy by dx will be greater than zero. So we're going to differentiate our h of x. So I'm going to, you just call that h dash, and that would be 9ax squared minus 2a plus 5. Okay, um, right. This thing is an increasing function. So we're just going to put that thing, 9ax squared minus 2a plus 5 is greater than 0. Now, if I just look at this, 9ax squared uh, is always going to be greater than 0. Uh, where if a is a positive constant, so it's, it's going to be, sorry, it's going to be greater or equal to 0. Uh, it's going to be greater or equal to 0. Which means we need to have, for this thing, so this thing, the lowest this bit can be is 0. So effectively, you've got 0 minus 2a plus 5 is greater than 0. So that means minus 2a plus 5 must be greater than 0. So I have to say, but to explain this, so I'm going to get rid of that and explain that again. Right, so we'll look back here. You've got your h, h uh, dash of x, so that's your gradient function is 9ax squared minus 2a plus 5. So put that greater than 0. But nine because a is a positive number, 9ax squared will always be greater or equal to 0. The smallest can be 0 when x is equal to 0. And then, so you're just left with 2a minus 5. So, uh, so just say, so minus 2a plus 5 must be greater than 0, which means 5 must be greater than 2a which means 5 over 2 must be greater than a, or you could say that means a is less than 2.5. Okay, so work out the possible values of a. Now, a is positive, so that means your a could be is, sorry, my a is greater than 0, it's positive, so 
is greater than, ze greater than zero, but it's also less than 2.5 would be what it would be. So that's what you're, you're going to have. I think you would lose a mark. I'd imagine you'd lose a mark if you just write this as your answer because it does state that A is positive. So positive indicates greater than zero. Okay, right. Well, tricky enough we question this one, I'd imagine. Right, here's a sketch of y is equal to cos x for values of x from 0 to 360. A, sorry, alpha, is that an alpha? Alpha is an obtuse, no, it's an A. A is an obtuse uh, angle measured in degrees. Cos of A is equal to minus k, where k is positive constant. Take the two boxes that show expression where cos of x is equal to... Um, minus k. So again, basically where it's equal to the same place. So if it's equal to that by symmetry, if you just continue as we line along, this will also be, uh, this will also be equal to um, minus k here. So what is that? And that's going to be, well, it's 270 minus a. Let's see if that's one of the ones. Yep, yeah, 270 minus a. Because you go, you go, it's not 270 minus a, that's not right. No, apologies. Right. Um, what it is there, if you look here, it's from this, from here to here, from its maximum point, there's its maximum point, I've gone forward a, apologies, yep, I've gone forward a. So from its maximum point here, I need to go um, back a. So that really is. 360 minus a, so there's 360 minus a. And uh, right, I've got to get another one now. Do, 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 do. Um, I also could go. Yeah, there we are. I think they're testing your understanding of the. The symmetrical nature of the or the how these continue to move the same way. So you can imagine here if I continue this with line along, uh, there it would be also would be there's 360 plus another a would take me to here. So 360 plus a. So as well, another one would have been if I'd gone back a this way. That would have taken me to the same place. So there's your two things. So 360 minus a or 360 plus a. So from your from your maximum point here, I could have moved forward a, or I could have been moved back a, back a. So from my maximum point here, I can move back a or forward a. So the maximum point at that stage was three at 360. So 360 plus a or 360 minus a. Okay. Not really the way I would do these normally. I would use a cast diagram to do a question. I got it really, but. They sort of asked it in a way that you couldn't. Okay, circle expression for x where sine x is equal to minus k. Right, sine x. Right, let's draw a wee graph of the old sine x graph here from this. Apologies for being real this, but this will just make life a lot easier for me. Right, your sine x graph is, is very, very like your cost graph. However, it's the same graph, exactly the same graph, except it's been shifted along by uh, by 90 degrees okay so that's what your cost graph looks like okay so we want to see where sine x equals minus k so basically where sine x has the same value so sine x you can see here that's just uh, have a look. There was uh, from your maximum, sorry, from your maximum point, you went forward A. So the maximum point for the sine is 90. So we're going to go forward A from it. Okay, so from your maximum point, you're going to go forward A. So the maximum point is 90. So 90 plus A is that one of our options. It is indeed 90 plus A. All right, so that's I've just drawn my, that was. My cost graph, I just drew my sine graph over the top of it, made it a wee bit easier, I think, to see. Right, then I'm going to read a lot question. Okay, in these, uh, question 19, in these simultaneous equations, k is a positive constant, 
Solve the simultaneous equations, give your answer in its simplest form in terms of k. Right, a bit unusual. To do this, we're going to fire the y into the linear equation here, the first equation. So I'll call that equation 1, I'll call that equation 2. I'm going to just say sub uh, equation 2 into equation 1. So my equation 1 will become 3x plus 4 times 2kx is equal to k. So that means 3x plus 8kx equals k. And we have to make x a subject here. So I'm just going to pull an x outside of brackets. Give me 3, um, sorry, 3 plus uh, 8k is equal to k. And then that means my x is equal to k over 3 plus 8k. Now the question says, so I've got my x value, what my x value is in terms of k, just sub it into equation 2. So sub that into equation 2. So your equation 2 is going to be 2 times k, but instead of x, you're writing k over 3 plus 8k. So y is equal to, that will be 2 k squared over 3 plus 8k. Right, strange question. Uh, I think that's the answer. I think that's what we're looking for. So you've got your x value and you've got your corresponding uh, y value. So in its simplest form, is there anything else we can do? Give your answer in the simplest form. No, there's not. Okay, so I'll uh, so you just fill that in so that you can't do any cancelling down there. So as good as we can go. Right, uh, lovely question here. We sort of, this is like a, what's called, you would call us at an A-level mathematics, it's like a trigger entity question. It says, show that sine, two sine cubed plus two sine of cos squared plus five tan x cos x simplifies to be p sine x, where p is a constant. Two things you need to know here. You need to know uh, your two identities that you need are sine squared plus cos squared x is equal to one, and also, tan x is the same as sine x over cos x. So we're going to rewrite this thing, just say equals. So it's 2 sine cubed x plus 2 sine x. If you rearrange this one here, you would get that cos squared is 1 minus sine squared. Okay. And we'll not change, not change the cost, but here the tan, we're going to write it as sine x over cos x, then times cos x. Let's just do that out again. So that's 2 sine cubed x plus 2 sine x, multi multiplying out the brackets here, minus 2 sine cubed x. So you can see we're going to be getting rid of our sine cubes. And then if you do this bit, you have a cos on the bottom line, a cos on the top line, effectively. I'll write that as cos over 1, so you'll see, and they'll cancel each other out. So this term just becomes, this last term just becomes 5 sine x. Tidy up. Notice, sorry, notice your 2 sine cubed minus 2 sine cubed disappear. And then you're just left with 2 sine x plus 5 sine x, which equals a lovely 7 sine x. Very nice. Okay, question 21 is a very difficult circle serum question. So we have got to find the value of x. It says work out the value of x. We have a lot to do here. Um, so in this one, first thing I do is mark on that these two sides are the same, which means this angle is 2x. That also allows us to say then that this angle in here by all angles in a triangle adding to 180. So this angle here is going to be 180 minus 4x. We're also going to use this, the theorem which says the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So if this is your angle at the circumference, this one here, this one, this 7, uh, 7x, then the angle at the center is here. That's going to be 14x. Now this gets very messy. That's going to be 14x. If that's 14x there, then if the angle at the point, 
that's oops, that's going to be uh, 360 minus 14x. Okay, we're going to use our angle at the center uh, formula again. This one here in green is uh, 6x. That means this angle here to here is going to be double it, so it's going to be 12x. So really what we've shown is that angle in green, the 12x, is the same as 180 minus 4x and 360 minus 14x. So if you tidy that up, you're going to have 12x is equal to, and 180 plus 360 would be 440, then minus, that's going to be minus, um, yeah, minus 18x, is it? Minus 18x, and then we'll bring that 18x across, you'll have 12x plus 18x is equal to 540 which means 30x is equal to 540. xn is equal to 540 divided by 30. I'm just doing this without a calculator. That's going to be 554 over 3, which is 3 goes into the 5 once, 2 left over, 3 goes into 24, 8 times, so it's going to be 18, 18 degrees. Okay, that is not easy at all. That's a very, very difficult, uh, very, very difficult question, I think. Uh, there we go. Right. Last question, and another not a not a terribly nice question here. I've gone off. I've done this one already. I had a look at this one earlier on. Didn't like it, so I thought I had to work this one out. To, um, do this out to explain it. So it says here five five digit integers are made. Uh, five digit integers are made using numbers one, two, seven, eight, and nine. For each integer, all the digits are used exactly once. So it's like a code. So you could come, this could be a code breaking question. How many codes can you make using these digits? And each integer, each integer uh, for each integer, all the, not, all the digits are used exactly once. The integers are all greater than 40,000 and odd. So that tells us something. So greater than 40,000 means, so greater than 40,000, so it must start with either the seven, eight or nine, because I've started at one, it would only be in the 10,000, started with a 2, it would only be in the 20,000, so that, that's our restriction. The next thing, it's odd. So odd means it must end in 1, 7, or 9. Now where have I done this out? So that's the restrictions. So I've done this out in red here. There we are. So if it starts with a 7 and it ends in a 1, let me just write down what my numbers are here first before I forget them. 1, 2, 7, 8, and 9. So if it starts with a 7 and ends, uh, here's a way we can use uh, different combinations we can have. It can either start with a 7 and be end in a 1. That's one way. It can start with a 7 and end with a 9. It can start with a, a 9 and end in a 1. It can start with a 9 and end in a 7. It can start with an 8. And end in a one. You can start with an eight and end in a seven. You can start with an eight and end in a nine. So that's the only ways. There's seven ways there. Is that right? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven ways that we can have this have a start and an end. We just need to work out how many combinations there are in between them. Okay. So there's seven ways of getting the first and last digits. Then the other three digits. So this is my my second digit my third digit, and there's four, and my fourth digit. So each one of these uses up two digits, which means for your second digit, you've got three numbers which are possible for it. But for your third digit, then you've only got two numbers. Your fourth digit, then you've only got one number. So three times two times one is six. So there's the other three digits, there's six ways. For the other three digits, there's six possible combinations. And we knew there were seven originally, there were seven options for the other digits. So seven times six gives you 42. Now that's not a very concise way of doing it, but it's a way that makes sense to me that I can understand it. So uh, there we are. So I'll just put it on the screen. You can pause the video and read through that. Write down your five digits 
and then think you've got to think right because it's over 40,000 has to begin with either seven eight or nine because it's odd it either ends in either one seven or nine so if you start with seven go through that again just start with seven it ends in one uh, start with seven and it could also end in nine because it has to be greater than 40,000 and an odd and then what else we got it could also start with nine and end in one it could also start with nine and end in seven so for the ones that start with seven there's only two options uh once start with nine there's only uh two options but for starting with eight it could end in one it could end in seven or it could end in nine so in total seven options of getting the first and last digit and then we just work out how many option ways of getting the combinations in between which was six so seven times six is 42. difficult question it's the last question in the exam so you expect the last couple of questions to be difficult and they certainly were